These are the five things that I hate about being an electrician. All right, so I love this. I need to start out and prefacing that Y'all know me. I'm like the electrician's electrician. I'm like the nerdy electrician, the one that likes thinking about electrons and like, I don't know, quantum theory and stupid stuff that doesn't even matter. It's like, just run the wires in the wall. That's the kind of electrician I am. Like, I'm about this stuff. I'm super, super, super about it. I read books about it. I study, I take things apart. Like, I'm super extra about how much I love being an electrician. However, comma, there's still some things that as I was coming up, I hated. And I just had to like get used to it. Um, because it's just the way things are. So the number one thing that I've always hated is that we have to go to work so early. Like <laughs> we gotta be up at, I don't know, four or five o'clock. Some people have to be at work at 5.30. Some people have to be six, 6.30. Usually, I think most companies are like starting their day at about seven o'clock, right? Like you show up on a job at seven o'clock. I have no problem getting up early. I love getting up early. I was in the military and I've been doing construction. Like my whole life, I've pretty much just been up early. What I don't like is getting up early and having to go to work right away, like that early. Now, on the flip side of it, uh, we get to get out super early, right? If we have to show up at six, we're out by 2.30. We have the whole rest of the day ahead of us. So I kind of love that. I just always hated, when I first started doing this, I hated getting up so early and having to leave and immediately go to work so early. Um, it, it, I was doing this like last minute kind of, you know, I would, I'd roll out of bed or I'd like set five different alarms because I didn't want to wake up to the first one and then I would snooze and snooze and snooze and snooze and then I would be like, doing 90 miles an hour to try to slide into the parking lot and then be like two minutes late. So uh, that's something to work on. If you're that like late person, just wake up 30 minutes sooner, set your alarm 30 minutes earlier and get up to that alarm 30 minutes earlier. Um, but it was really hard for me, like starting out to just be there earlier, be there like on time because I'm just, when I wake up, I'm stupid. I'm a zombie and I need coffee and I, like my brain doesn't work until the coffee hits my stomach. Um, so anyways, I hated waking up early. Number two, the thing to this day I still hate about this trade is the digging. Now, I have a little bit of a frothy taste in my mouth about it all because I'm in Texas, specifically Central Texas, where it seems like all of Central Texas is on a giant boulder. And then that boulder is right beneath the soil. So we can't dig, we can't drive ground rods, we can't have pools without it being like a crazy, monstrosity of an excavation project. Uh, it, it takes forever to get through soil. Trying to dig a trench with like one of those walk behind trenchers, not possible in a lot of places here. Trying to drive a ground rod more than about a foot before it just kinks and bends over, not possible. So it's really difficult digging in Texas, let alone it's 105, 110 degrees out in the middle of summer. Most of the year, it's just really hot. like over 90 degrees. Even like Christmases, we'll have 92 degree Christmases. Not this year, but most of the time it's stupid hot out. So having to dig in that is overwhelming. Heat exhaustion, and then you're just full of like dirt. Oh my God, I hate digging. I will. I'll be the first person to go grab a rock bar and a shovel and I'll go to town, man, all day long swinging with the best of them. But bro, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I'd rather be up there on a mini X, just bleep, 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 like messing around with a rock bar or a, a rock saw, you know, driving a tractor. That's my speed these days. Coming around 40 years old pretty soon, 37, hanging on to 37 real well, but about to hit 40. Man, I'm tired of swinging a fucking shovel. I'm so damn tired of it. So digging is my number two. I hate it, dude. I hate digging. All right, next up on my list of things I hate is attics. I hate attics just as much as I hate digging. <laughs> it's just as bad and I hate it just as much. 
a lot of the times we're working in houses that were built in the 50s and 60s. There's like old sand particle asbestos insulation and like you're crawling through all of it and it, it just feels like crap and it's getting in everything. Your eyes are burning because you just got all this like fiberglass shards in your eyes and like embedded in your skin. Dude, I, I hate crawling attics. I'll have my tools on and I'll drop a screwdriver and poof, it's down in the insulation somewhere and you're just like, shit. And you sit and digging and digging and digging. And you can't find it. You just, I've lost so many tools in, in attics. And then, I mean, I've been doing this for a while. Now they have tools that are like glow in the dark. They didn't have that back in the day. So uh, I just hate being in attics. Plus the heat again, right? I'm in Texas. If it's 110 outside, it's 150 in an attic. And I'm not just like inflating numbers. Seriously, if you take a temperature gauge and throw it up in an attic, you should see how crazy hot it gets up in attics because they store all of that heat, right? They have the insulation below so that it doesn't come in, but it magnifies from the black tar roof above you and it just creates this hot box with no airflow. Oh my God. I hate attics. Like uh, you walk out of an attic and you're like, you're you're dizzy because <laughs> you're sweating profusely. Like you just buckets of water dripping off of you. By the time you get down, you're just like. <gasps> so Texas attics specifically, but attics I hate. All right, next thing is a personal thing. I hate heights. Some people don't. Some people are all right with heights. I am really good at pretending that I'm all right at heights because I just do it anyways and I don't sit and complain about it. But dude, I hate heights. And I guess I'm more okay with heights the more sturdy the thing is that I'm standing on. But if it's real wobbly, <laughs> it's just, it seems sketchy as fuck. But dude, I'm having a real conversation with myself in my head at that moment. Uh, it took me a long time even to get up on a scissor lift. Now <laughs> I get on a scissor lift and I've got a new helper and I get up and they're like hanging on to the rails. I'm like, oh, we're going to have fun today. I'm like rocking the thing and bouncing it and trying to hit stuff. <laughs> like, I'm okay with it now. I get it. Like I understand where the bounds of it are and I have yet to tip over a scissor lift and I've done a lot of crazy shit with them. So I know that they're pretty damn safe pieces of equipment. Um, if I get up on a 44 foot extension ladder and I'm like standing on the top rung, leaning on a house, <laughs> like reaching over my head, bro, that sketches me out. You know, like still to this day, I've done all kinds of stuff and I'm not even going to tell you the things that I've done on ladders because they are, they're not okay. <laughs> and I don't want to give you any stupid ideas, but I have engineered some things in my heads that were that my heads, I have multiple heads. I've engineered some things with ladders over the days that I've been doing this. I've had other people a uh, party to some sketchy ladder tricks and stairwells. Um, <laughs> that's some really stupid stuff. But dude, I hate heights. I hate, hate, hate heights. And I don't know where it came from. Actually, I know. I fell off of a ladder one time. I was ballsy. I didn't care about heights at all. Like they didn't affect me. Um, I'd get up on roofs and like f fly, just like running around like nothing bothered me. And then I fell off of a ladder and broke my ankle. And I think like just subconsciously that ever since then, I've had this weird thing about heights. Um, so I hate heights, but I only hate the heights when the situation's really sketchy, slippery, you know, A-frame roof, terrified, right? Still do it, still gonna get up there. But bro, I just hate heights and I have like some real, real conversations with myself in those moments. Uh, yeah, so heights. All right, the next thing, I actually kind of love this, but also hate it because when I was an apprentice, I was broke and I couldn't afford new tools. I hate how many tools it takes to be an electrician. Like we don't just have, you know, a, a plumber might have like a couple, like a handful of things. They don't have to wear pouches. They just don't have that much going on. They got glue and primer. You know, they got a sawzall to cut the pipe with. They might have some like drills to like screw things every once in a while. But for the most part, they don't have to use any of that stuff. There's very little tools. Uh, they might have, you know, they might be doing black pipe and they might have to have a threader and stuff like that. But like overall, the amount of tools on a plumber's truck are far little compared to the amount of materials that they carry around because everything they have is a big fitting or coupling or like pipe. With us, it's the opposite. Our trucks are like overflowing with tools. 
so many different power tools because there's so many different things we do. We don't just install pipe all day long. That's one type of a thing we do. We have wired, so many different kinds of wire. We might be running rolls of wire. We might be like having reels of wire that we're pulling off of. We might have to have a rack to put all of the wire on. We have couplings and connectors and fittings and straps. We have breakers and panels. We have meters. We have like, dude, just so many different things that we do for every different kind of environment too. So you might be completely tooled up just to do residential. And then you go to a, a commercial job one day and you realize like, oh dude, like three of my tools work. I need all new tools for this commercial work. And so you have to go get all geared up for that. And then you have different like test equipment for different environments and you might be troubleshooting and you're like a second year apprentice and you think that this tester you have works for every job. And then you realize like, whoa, I can't understand the logic of circuitry with the beater that I have or this tick tracer that just goes dee -dee 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 everywhere. <laughs> like you actually have to invest and the better tools that you get, the less often you're having to buy them. And then because it's electricity, you're going to cut a wire sometime and that $45 pair of Lyman's pliers that you just bought <laughs> smoked them because you didn't check if the circuit was hot or not, or you used the little beep and it was the batteries were dead. You didn't realize the batteries were dead and it wasn't going beep, 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 beep. So you thought you could trust that the power wasn't on. Stop using tick tracers, the beep, 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 beep things. I hate them. But what I'm saying is like you constantly are reinvesting in new tools. You might be using a hand hacksaw to cut through pipe and then you realize, okay, now I've got the money. I'm going to go get me a, ha a sawzall. So you go get a sawzall and then you're using a sawzall for a couple years and then eventually you're like, God, I'm so tired of cutting through stuff with a sawzall. I see the guy over there using a bandsaw. Oh my God, it just cuts through everything like butter. So now boom, another $400 gone. And then you'll have batteries go out. And so now you gotta go buy these batteries that are like a hundred to $200 a piece. You know, we just keep so many tools for so many different things. Materials too, so many materials for so many different things. And then like most of us that have been doing this a while, we have all the extra tools that we are like our just in case tools. So we're like carrying around all these things that we might not use, but maybe once a year, once every few months. And then there's stuff that you're gonna use, you know, every week. And then there's the stuff you're using all day, every day. There's just so much. There's so much that it requires uh, for you to be able to be good at this. And at, from a young age, like I always wanted to be good. I wasn't just showing up to like collect a paycheck and hoping that that was it. Like I fell in love with this stuff right away and I knew, oh, I wanted to be a journeyman. Ooh, I want to run my own company someday. I was like, I want to be about this. So I wanted to get every tool that I knew that I had to have. And I had crappy tools at first. They were just hand-me-downs that like got the job done. But then I would like break things constantly and it's like, God, I need better tools. I need stuff that's going to last. I need like, and then I would use the journeyman's tools around me and I'm like, oh, whoa. This feels, this is a completely different experience using this tool than using my crappy thing over here. So, you know, it's, you're just spending tons of money your entire career on tools. Um, so tools is my next thing. And the last thing that I still to this day just can't stand about this trade, this industry, is how much other electricians are shitty to other electricians. We have like this really big machismo ego problem. Like you are in the union, union suck. You are not in the union. You're not even an electrician. There's like this infighting constantly. The old hate the young, the young hate the old. Union hates non-union, non-union hates union. Nobody respects trade schools because they're all just taking everybody's money and they're not necessary. Unless you're like, I don't know, in Canada or somewhere where they like require by law for you to get your license. You have to go through them. That's a different thing. But there's just all of this, like, I know the code better than you, and I'm gonna tell you what you're doing is wrong, but I don't even know the code, and I can't cite the code. Oh, I don't even know a code book. I just know that you're wrong. And it's like, wait, where are you coming from? You don't understand that my jurisdiction requires it to do this. Yeah, whatever, it's not, <laughs> it's just, every electrician thinks they're the smartest person on the planet. And I find that through this trade, there's this constantly, like, needing to prove your worth to everybody else around you. And once you get up to a point where you're like feeling like you're a big fish in a small pond, you feel like you know a lot. So when somebody challenges what you know, you got to get up and like inflared about it because your ego is being defended, you know, like offended. And so there's just this like, 
this thing that happens where it's constantly like breaking up against rocks against each other and I hate it. It's the stupidest thing. I hate that when I go on Instagram and somebody posts their work, the comments are just littered with like, oh, you missed this. Oh, you didn't put this coupling. You should have blah, 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 blah. It's like, we can't just acknowledge people's successes without acknowledging the incredible ways that they failed. I understand it. The reason is that most electricians are coming into problems every day. We're looking for problems everywhere we go. We're doing work and then there's like a conduit that's crooked. We just told the apprentice to straighten it and put a level on it and now it's crooked. And it's like, dude, go back and straighten that. You know, like, did you, and then I'll have somebody build a service and I come out and I have a list in my mind and I'm looking through, all right, did they put the little threaded bushing on everything? Did they put a bonding bushing on here? Did they make sure that they got their ground rod? Is it, you know, is there another ground rod no closer than six feet away? You know, how far off the roof is the mast? Do we have to put guy wires? Are, like, you have to check all of these things and more often than not, you find problems. Even if you're working like service work, if you're not doing a new thing that you're building, just going out and doing service work. You're walking into a situation that's messed up and you're trying to figure out what's off about it. And so I get it, I completely understand. But there is some like extreme hatred that people show between each other. And it's really stupid. And I think that like this, that kind of dichotomy that happens within our industry is something that I've always disrespected. I've always seen as like the thing that makes our trade look so terrible is how much we all hate each other and don't get along. There's no like common like respect, love, bolstering, trying to build each other up. That's not necessarily true. There are communities out there. And I think what I've tried to do my entire career is to build communities in which that is the case, which respect is what is first. We all treat each other with respect and then we can come into crit uh, criticizing stuff because we know it's not about like, you should never be an electrician, you're a shitty human being, and, like you should die. You know, like Some of these Facebook groups are raw and there's no moderation. There's nobody there to like be the voice of reason and be like, yo dude, don't, don't be like that. Like that could be the thing that makes somebody not want to be an electrician anymore just because you're being a dickhead online. You know, so like I've tried to always garnish every group that we have, our Discord server, Facebook groups, like all of it, trying to be a respectful place of learning and teaching. And that's it. So I think that should be a bigger thing. So the kind of like the ego and machismo fighting infighting in our industry is the one thing that I absolutely can't stand about this trade. So that's it. Let me know what you guys think below. I guarantee there's already gonna be lots of comments, things, oh, you forgot this, and oh, I hate this, and oh, I... Also acknowledge the things you love about it, right? I was kind of hesitant to even do a things I hate video because then it just focuses on like things that people hate and it's going to be a very hate filled vibe and I don't want that because again, dude, I love this trade. This is like the best thing that's ever happened. It is the, well, having, having my son was the best thing that ever happened to me. This is the next best thing, but both of them like made the other thing matter more, right? So I love this trade. I don't hate anything about it. These are just the things that like get on my nerves the most out of any other things. So, love you crazy people. See you in the next one.